Hello guys, my name is Purabi Sarka and welcome to my Bioscience World. So today, I'll be talking about discovery of DNA and the very famous Watson and Crick model. So let's begin. There was a Swiss physician named Frederick Michaud in 1869 who identified nuclei of pus cells and called as nuclein. But it took over 50 years for him to be appreciated by the scientific community. The next came R. Altman in 1889 who renamed nuclein as nucleic acid. The next, Professor Oswald Avery in the year 1944 identified DNA as a transforming principle and further provided the evidence that DNA is a genetic material. Erwin Chogov in the year 1950 said that DNA is species specific. That means when diasymmetric ratio is more than one, it will be featured for higher organism whereas when it is less than one, it will be found in lower organisms. Next one was the Rosalind Franklin in 1952 who provided a crystalline DNA fiber and with the help of that James Watson and Francis Crick in 1953 finally gave the double DNA helix structure and in 1958 they owned the Nobel Prize. I hope this flowchart and the diagram would be helpful for you to remember. Now let's see James Watson and Crick what they have given in the model and the features that has been written here. So let's talk about it. So a polynucleotide chain 1 and polynucleotide chain 2 are bound by a hydrogen bond. So we can say that the DNA molecule consists of two linear polynucleotide chain which are anti-parallel to each other and are held by hydrogen bonds. So that is the first point. The second point is that these two strands are helically coiled around a common axis in a clockwise manner. Now let's go to the third point. If you see there is an alternate arrangement of phosphate sugar, phosphate sugar, phosphate sugar and so on that forms the backbone of the double helix structure. So, alternatively arranged sugar and phosphate molecules forms the backbone of the double helix structure. That is our third point. Now, the fourth point is the nitrogenous bases, as you can see present, are projected into the space between the two backbones, which again helically coil to form a double helix structure and rotate in a clockwise manner. Also, the fifth point is the number of purin is always equal to number of pyrimidine, which is also a Chargoff's equation. Now, Chargoff's rule given by Erwin Chargoff in 1950. He said that purin and pyrimidine are always in equal amount. A plus G equals to T plus C. And the amount of adenine is always equal to thymine and the amount of guanine is always equal to cytosine. But also he mentioned that the amount of A plus D is not necessarily be equal to G plus C. And the ratio he provided for A plus D by G plus C vary from species to species. This is what I was talking about, the diasymmetric ratio. That if it is more than 1, it is found in higher organism. But if it is less than 1, it is found in lower organisms. The fifth point mentions that the pentose sugar and the phosphate group occurs in equal proportion. Now let's talk about the helical configuration of the DNA. So the polynucleotide chain shows polarity. One end of each DNA strand called 5 prime end signifies the free carbon atom at the fifth position and 3 prime end signifies the free carbon atom at the third position. Also, there is a presence of minor groove and major groove. Minor groove is a narrow angle whereas the major groove is a wider angle and both of these are based on the geometry of the base pairs. The distance between adjacent base pair is 0.34 nanometer. The length of a complete helix is 3.4 nanometer consisting of 10 base pairs. Also, the helix have a constant diameter of 
20 Armstrong or 2 nanometer. It has been highlighted here, the points. Also, we need to know about the stability of the DNA helix. So the presence of thousands of hydrogen bonds contribute greatly in stabilizing the DNA helix. Also, hydrophobic and van der Waals interaction between the stocked adjacent base pair also contribute. So let's quickly see the summary. We saw how finally we got the DNA helix structure contributed by our all great scientists. Then the DNA helix moves in a clockwise direction. We got to know about the polarity 5 prime and 3 prime end based on the free carbon atom present at the position. We got to know about the stability in which we saw how hydrogen bonds contribute greatly in stabilizing the DNA and the hydrophobic and van der Waals interaction and DNA helical configuration. We also learn about the Charkov's equation which says number of purine is always equal to number of pyramid. Okay, so that's all for today. I hope you could understand my video. If you have any doubts related to the video, please feel free to comment below, like, subscribe and interact. Till then, stay safe, be happy.